So in this enclosure, we've got a trio of adders. This is Britain's only uh, native venomous species. And they come out quite early. So as soon as the sun's shining, uh, these girls are out having a, a bit of a bask, trying to thermoregulate and uh, enjoy some sunshine. And we're gonna attempt to feed them. They might be hungry, they might not be, but they've, they've come out of a winter long formation. We're just gonna see whether or not. Ooh. How can the snake tell that it's something they want to eat? Well, they've got a really good sense of smell. And we've warmed them up to replicate the rodent body heat as well. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and why are you using forceps, Mark? I'm using the forceps just to maximize the distance between my hand and their heads. Just because they are a venomous species and although uh, and although they certainly wouldn't be interested in hurting me just because they're feeding. Um, I want to avoid any potential to get bitten myself. So what would happen if they, you did get bitten? Well, predominantly it would hurt. And uh, the reaction is, it, it varies very much depending on the individual. Um, usually you'd expect uh, a lot of pain, localized pain and swelling in the area that was bitten. They're a hematoxic species. So very similar, although much milder venom to rattlesnakes and other large wifey species. So can adders unhinge their jaws then? Yeah, like many species, they can open their jaws extremely widely, which is an adaptation for them just to take uh, a relatively much large meal, which you can see here, the mice compared to the uh, size of the snake's head. Brilliant. So we've got two of them already feeding quite nicely. Nice. How long is that going to take them to actually swallow? Well, it could take anything up to about 30 minutes. Huh. Um, but, but sometimes quicker, the sun's out, so they're pretty active as you can see. She's decided she wants to take it backwards. Normally they'll take things head first and it's just a, um, a far easier way for them to swallow. But this adder's trying to uh, prove me wrong. And then if they do keep down a whole mouse, how long would that keep them satiated for? Um, for a female of this size, probably a couple of weeks. So we're feeding them every two weeks, two to three weeks. And why is it important that we have adders here at Wildwood? Well, it tells a really important spe uh, story of species decline in this country. And adders are extremely important. You know, they, they do a really valuable job on farmland and short downs in controlling rodent populations, particularly short tailed voles, um, which can be an agricultural pest in a lot, lot of areas. And they're a beautiful animal as well. They're quite misunderstood, um, but they're one of our native species. They're a real key to a, a healthy environment. So we look at an adder, we look at adder populations, where they live and the kind of habitats they live in. And, uh, and that gives us an idea of how well the environment is doing. Up grabbing the same mouse. This one trying to do.
putting on quite a display now. There you go. Oh. Wow. Nice. Well done. So if people are out for a walk and they spot a snake, how can they tell it's an adder as opposed to, let's say, a grass snake, for example? Well, adders, most adders are quite distinctive. They've got a really typical zigzag pattern um, along their back. But that's not true of all of them. You get melanistic um, varieties as well. So you can, you can have jet black adders, you can have single colored adders. Um, usually the way to tell is that the grass snake is a far longer, more slender species. These are actually quite stocky, as you can see. Um, the grass snake has the collar around its neck as well. It's got a little ring around its neck. Um, if you were close enough to see, you'll see these have got um, almost cat-like eyes, but split people. Um, whereas the, the, the grass snake doesn't, it's perfectly round uh, people. And these are um, not as frequently found around water. So if you were to look at a grass snake, or they're found around ponds, they're feeding predominantly on uh, aquatic life, fish and amphibians make up the majority of their diet and these are um, far more likely to be out on a nice chalk downland. And they'll sit there now and just digest that. Over the next few days, that will keep these guys going. 